Hello, my name is Quentin Carton. I'm solution consultant in the intelligence automation team at ServiceNow. In today's video, I want to highlight the power of our business continuity management solution coupled with our automation engine capabilities and product. In the BCM space, in business continuity management space, there's a lot of tasks that need to be orchestrated. When we're planning for a disaster recovery uh, test, um, uh, there is a lot of um, different teams of SMEs involved to perform very technical tasks. We believe that uh, with our BCM solution coupled with automation engine, we can orchestrate um, most of those tasks or, or even all of those tasks and know what the value for you as a customers using the ServiceNow platform, uh, you can you know, eliminate those uh, repetitive and mundane tasks and you can accelerate the time it takes it take to um, perform those exercises. Um, so let's uh, move to the demonstration part here. I'm connected to my instance as Bill. Bill is a business continuity manager and is using the business continuity workspace um, on the ServiceNow platform to manage and track all the BCM activities. Here, we're gonna be performing a um, BCM exercise. So I'm gonna go and drill down into the exercise that I will be using in the demonstration. It's the last one on the at the bottom. It's called application DR failover exercise. And here I can manage, you know, track all the activities related to that particular event. So I can click in the detail and specify, you know, who is going to be the approver, who, who that event is going to be assigned to, the plan start and things like that. Um, if I click into asset, I can identify the asset related to that particular uh, exercise, which is very useful from an automation engine perspective because uh, when, when we're going to be using our flow designer, integration hub and RPA technology are part of automation engine, I can dynamically capture the metadata or the configuration of those assets. Think about, you know, um, reconfiguring a cluster or DNS entries and things like that. It's all changed configuration that are stored in the CMDB in our asset management table in ServiceNow. And now I have this uh, available um, from an automation perspective, which makes the uh, automation um, maintenance uh, way easier uh, since we don't have to hard code any configuration outside of ServiceNow. If I click on plans, I can tie the different um, uh, plans that I want to use for that exercise. And if I keep uh, moving on, you'll see the different event tasks. The event tasks are typically very technical uh, tasks that uh, for which I'm going to rely on specific teams, the storage team, the middleware team, the network team, the DNS team, and so on. Could be uh, 50 different tasks for a particular event or a particular uh, failover exercise. Uh, here, we see that we're going to be, in, we're going to need to update a bunch of DNS entries for that particular application. There is things that needs to happen at the storage and, and so on and so on. And at the end, we, we um, likely need to verify that the application is up and running. So there is a bunch of testing that needs to happen. Typically, um, you know, there's a lot of time wasted just waiting for uh, a team to give the green light for the other team to perform uh, uh, their task. Uh, well, when you run this on the ServiceNow platform, you can design the workflow uh, to orchestrate all those tasks and also leverage automation engine, as you can see, to uh, actually perform that automation and send status back to our BCM tool so we can actually orchestrate the, the sequence of events. So let's, um, let's see if I can start this event and uh, walk through, uh, walk, let me walk you through a particular example. Here, um, as any um, failover exercise or BCM exercise, I need to basically uh, give the green light, the go no go decision on when we start that exercise. Here, I'm just gonna mark it complete. This is in the back, uh, back end of a BCM product. This is a triggering uh, and changing the states of the different tasks that you can see here. So now that it's marked as close complete, uh, the automation is triggered automatically because that's the way we've configured that sequence of uh, event tasks. So if I refresh the screen, you should see the, uh, the update DNS task has been completed. So let me show you what happened uh, behind the scenes. So why it was that fast to perform that automation. So I'm going to open that uh, uh, specific event task and you can see here some activity um, trails. So if I look there, you can see that 
our automation engine capabilities have updated successfully the DNS. And if I want to really understand what happened, I can click on that link and it, show, it will show me the particular flow context. This is the, the workflow that just um, run with the different tasks associated to uh, you know, updating the DNS entry for that particular application. So if I click on event task, and, uh, that was a trigger configured for that flow. And if I keep going down, I can see that the, that flow was specifically configured for that use case, right? So we're performing a bunch of lookup in the CMDB on the platform so we can um, grab the specific um, new IP address that we need to update in the DNS for that particular application. And here I want to highlight that step, update a, a record in the DNS zone. This is uh, uh, from the workflow perspective, this is the workflow leveraging or integration hub capabilities using a specific spoke that, that was created to uh, perform tasks outside of ServiceNow. Here we going into your DNS, changing uh, the DNS zone, updating some entries. Normally there could be a task that is done by a SME, a DNS um, expert who will run manually or run a bench, run, run a bench of script to perform that task, here we eliminate that need completely. And then we update the, the task um, because it's not a reason uh, because we have uh, automated the process that we should not update in service now uh, with the status of those um, automations. So that's what we do here. Uh, the automation updates automatically the event task in the BCM product. So the BCM manager can see where we are and have full visibility on what's going on. So let me go back to that um, event list. Now you can see that um, other task was uh, completed as uh, this one was automatically completed. Automation engine has also automated a bunch of uh, other tasks. So let me uh, refresh uh, again. Now you can see that even the, the last um, step, which is validate that the application was recovered. Uh, here it was mostly um, a failover test, making sure that we can, uh, if there is a disaster in one data center, making sure we can fail over the, the entire application stack. So let's see what happened in that one. I'm gonna open that particular task. Oftentimes the last uh, few, the last step of a uh, exercise like this is to make sure the application is up and running. And it takes a bunch of people to go and logging to that application, doing some specific testing on those applications, making sure all the functionality are working and we have a successful uh, DR exercise. Here we have automated this with automation engine and one of the capabilities that we use for that is RPA. You can see that in that particular task that was completed, our RPA solution has uploaded a screenshot of that application and what it does, what it is exactly is our RPA hub capabilities um, can go and perform a, perform a bunch of click, uh, opening an application, uh, web UI, for example, log into that application and verify that the functions are working. So for that particular exercise, we have um, created um, an RPA bot and that bot will basically uh, log into that uh, specific application and perform a bunch of tests and uh, report back if it's successful or not. If it's successful, it will mark that event task as a close and complete. If there is um, an error during the testing, the robot will perform those tests and they will be also uh, retrieved and exposed there and the task won't be uh, marked as complete. And the BCM manager, whoever is tracking those events can take action to, uh, to uh, verify what's going on. And you can see here, um, so that's an update coming directly from our RPA. And if I click on in there, you can see the actual logic uh, behind the scene. So I'm showing the workflow uh, that was configured to uh, trigger that automation. Uh, and here is the workflow that triggered the RPA robot. So we can see that a particular trigger was configured for a specific event task. And then if I scroll down, um, there is a step here that add a work item to the queue. It's a specific um, capability and terminology that I'm using from our RPA Hub solution. So you basically, the workflow is adding a task to the RPA queue. And then the last step is here at start process. What it does is it's asking uh, the RPA uh, robot 
to perform that uh, testing. So it's basically uh, triggering a bot process. So that's, that's my trigger to uh, leverage the robot that we created for those specific tests. So now if I come back, uh, so that was to show you, we've seen the, the DNS update uh, entries uh, using Integration Hub. Now it's uh, leveraging our RPA technology. So if I come back to my um, event, here everything is uh, closed and marked as complete. And if I go back to my uh, plans, I should get the detail on how long it took for me to, um, pardon, to, to run that exercise. So now we see it. Actual time taken, eight minutes. Uh, so these numbers obviously can vary. There may be some manual approval in between different tasks. This is just an exercise, but this is to show you that most of the tasks uh, someone uh, will do as part of a, a, an exercise like this can be automated using automation engine. Here we've seen integration hub who can integrate to any system that have an API or can run script, PowerShell script, or use those protocol like, like SOAP or, or REST. Uh, so there is a really never a case where I cannot really automate using automation engine. If you cannot use integration hub, your workflow can leverage, like in my example, RPA hub to mimic a user that's going to go and click in the UI, for example, to test an application. So that's what we've done. I hope um, this, is, um, this is valuable for you and let us know if you have any questions.